Hi guys, so today's video, we're at McLaren Petersfield, AKA Lanzante. Now Lanzante are not your normal um, service center. They're actually kind of uh, coach builders, if you will. They, uh, they make their own special cars. I'm gonna have a quick tour around the factory and show you what they've done. But also, we're here to check on our McLaren P1 that's just been serviced by them. So come on, let's go inside and let's have a look at some special cars. Dean, Carl, how, how you are doing? You? Good to see you. Nice to see you. Nice to see Welcome you. Welcome in. Wow, so this is the, uh, this is it. This is the world famous Lanzanti workshop. Well, showroom. Yeah, front of house. Front of house, yeah. yeah. Absolutely, yeah, a few bits and pieces. So the factory's, the, the workshop's out the back? It is. That's where all the special, well, everything's special in here, I suppose. That's, uh, that's, where all the, that's where all the magic happens out And there. that is where your P1 is. That's where my P1 is. And so, what, you've, what you've come to see. Yeah, so first, I, just, I was explaining to our viewers that you're not just a, um, a service centre. You know, mm -hmm. you do so much more in the way of making things your own. Um, so like, for instance, the, the Pagani, this is a... Zonda Revolution. Zonda Revolution. One and of this five. Is, and this is purely started off life as a track legal track car. Track only car, and now fully road legal. Fully road legal, so someone can drive that on the road. Yep. Completely thanks to you. Well, me and a team of people, <laughs> we had not, not a solo yes. effort, but, uh, but absolutely, yeah. And you, you, we had a quick conversation about this. You've, you've changed so much of the car to do this, the, 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 the wing mirrors and the, the, um, the, the canards at the front and the instrument dials. And you, I mean, it's, you've, you've changed it so much. There, there's a lot you change, but you try and do it in a sympathetic manner that it doesn't look aftermarket. Mm -hmm. It's got to look like this rolled out the factory. So all the dive planes on the front, it's just, they're slightly thicker, the radius is a different to conform, you know, to make it roll legal, even the toe eye has a different radius to it. It doesn't just have main beam headlights, dip beam headlights, side repeaters, electric mirrors, certified plastics, uh, and that's without things like wiring loom, engine mapping, emissions, mm -hmm. all of the other you know, items. That, and what's, you know, what would be Horatio's thought on, on this project? Well, I don't think they're against it, given that it gives a car, you know, this is not a young car now, it gives it a second life. Yep. You know, a lot of these cars, uh, people buy them, they do the track programs. Obviously Ferrari, that mm -hmm. you're well aware of, would have done this, they did this really with the FXX program. Yep. And they're great initially when they're the latest track car, but after a while, people are like, okay, I'm How done with that. How long has that series gone for? Exactly. Or, or, the owner of this has got a fire R now. Yeah, he yeah, uses yeah. that on track instead. And yeah. then it's like, okay, I've got this car. And it, it sort of gives it a second life and uh, you, you know something else it can be used for. And is this the only road legal one? At the moment, we are doing a Zonda R as, as well in the workshop as okay. well. So that's the second. Is version. anyone else ever road legal one of these cars? Not that I know of. Oh, there you no. go. This is an exclusive. But people send their cars from all over the world to you? They do, yeah. Uh, in fact, the very little is from the UK. Yeah. Uh, biggest percentages from the US. Even for servicing? Even servicing, we're about 50% UK and the other 50% is outside. That's just for general McLaren servicing. Really? So like with P1s, uh, So obviously towers. you're regarded as, you know, the most well-respected F1 service center, in my opinion. But also P1, you get people send their P1s. Yeah. Obviously I sent you our P1, but yep. I'm only three hours down the road. Yeah, These people send them from America, from the US, from Japan, from everywhere. Well, I, I think you know, time moves fast. P1's not a young car anymore. And a lot of these new dealers open up and these dealerships have to decide whether they're gonna buy all the tooling and also train all the staff. And a lot of these dealers, they might see two or three P1s a year. Mm. And that's quite a lot of investment just to service two or three cars. Mm -hmm. With us, we do tons of these cars. We you know, road converted 36 P1 GTRs now. So even if we get 50% of those back every year, that's, you know, it's a car a month. Yeah. And then with standard P1 as well, you know, the, the numbers sort of build up pretty quickly. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, look, I've been without my P1 for a, a month or so now. Mm -hmm. So let's go and have a look at it. Let's go and have a run the workshop. Right, so the real reason why we're here today is this is our McLaren P1. 
that uh, needed a major service, so I had two choices. You either send the car to McLaren, or you send it to McLaren Petersfield, Lanzanti, to, um, to do all their work and, and service it. Now, Dean has got a reputation which is absolutely second to none when it comes to F1, P1, speed tail, even road legalization in um, Pagani, Byra R's, Zonda R's, and everything in between. So I'm gonna take you around and show you something that I've never seen and that um, not a lot of you have, is a P1 with the back end off. Now Dean, you can't take you can't take this off like I couldn't take this back end off in the showroom. It needs to come to a, you know, a, a service centre like this and special tooling to do so. Yeah. Yeah, it's quite involved to take the tail off. Um, for a start, you've got to take the wing off, and it's obviously an active aero car, so it's quite all involved in, in just doing that. But once you do get the tail off, it exposes everything, and you can carry out all the major things from bleeding suspension, engine work, engine maintenance, gearbox, HDA. It's it's all very accessible once yeah. you get it off. But it is. Quite, quite major to take that off. And how many hours do you spend on um, a P1 typically uh, for, a, for a major service? Um, I mean, it's, it's very varied. The car is 10 years old now, mm -hmm. so it, it, it's very varied on how it's been used and what's needed on it. A service can be as little as £5,000 mm -hmm. for a service. I think everybody hears the horror stories of, oh, they're not expensive the, of, of, of the, the bigger jobs. Um, but you know, obviously things like hybrid batteries, but I think that's the same with all of these kind, this sort of generation of, of car with the hybrid systems and stuff. But um, as, a, as a whole, it, they're not too bad. Um, even to take an engine out is, is 22 hours to take an engine out. Oh really? And oh, put it back. Like that, yeah. yeah, so it's not, it's McLaren keep us tight on the, the book times. And Dean has inspected this car and he reckons it's probably the best used P1 you've ever seen in your life? I mean, it is pretty immaculate, to be honest with you. And uh, it's quite a, unique interior as well to have full Alcantara interiors quite unique normally yeah. they were part leather part Alcantara but you've got so many special things in here this is like the most least special well, car I don't know about you have that, in here you'd walk past this not even look at it when you walk past the Zonda R the McLaren F1 GTR the F1 road car speed tail your road legaling a Porsche 9 Five. That's the latest project at the moment. Yeah. We'll, we'll launch this at uh, Goodwood Festival of Speed this year. Um, so, obviously, based off of a GT2 RS. Yeah. Um, but it is a track car, so there's a lot of things like suspension, lift system, damping, fuel systems, um, and just making the car more usable. Have you done one of these? yet no this, this is the first this is the first one the second one is in paint at the moment and this will well. be displayed where when it's done at festival of speed, festival in, of speed. In and your very impressive stand that you have well yeah you have the best stand at the festival it's not too bad <laughs> it's not too bad you've got a lot to live up to though with last year you had the p1 roadster yeah no it, you call it a roadster or a spider a spider a spider yeah okay. it's each year we we plan to have i mean even if it's not a new car or new project it will be a first version scene yeah yeah, yeah. so it'll always be something fresh or, or new and a lot of customers like to have their cars you know displayed there and shown there for the first so time. So the Porsche 935 is a complete track legal car, it's not a road legal car whatsoever. How many were produced? They built 77. 77, so there's 77 people around the world who have got a million euro car, yep. a bit more, a bit more. Um, that they can't use unless they take it to the track. Yeah, and, and that's... Unless they come and see you. Well, yeah, and uh, not all of them actually want it just to be used on track and not all of them want just the road use some of them just like a bigger operating window yeah. this car even road legal you'll be able to still drive it to a track of do course. a track day with it have a great time with it fill it with fuel easily and and so it's just as a bigger operating window window and bigger mm -hmm. usage really like the old days when you used to drive your 250 yeah. onto a track and then drive it home e exactly that yeah, but yeah, yeah. Or F McLaren F1 road. you compare that to having to have it transported on a truck and then you've got slicks and wet and then you have to have air jacks to lift the thing up and all of that you need personnel and that, that changes your, your usage really man hours to do this you don't know yet not yet. You don't know yet? No, we, I mean, we know data off of doing other conversions. Mm. P1, Senna GTR, we've road converted those. You kind of know where you're going with it. Um, the Zonda revolution was, was a huge job yeah. uh, to put that on the road. Yeah. That, that was quite a lot. And all these cars have different things. You know, P1 has active suspension, that's software related. This has passive suspension, so that's much easier. 
But then this has got no front headlights. Yeah. So then the design time and the work involved in even... Will you put flip-up headlights? They won't be. No? no. They'll be I just, I'm, I'm, I'm picturing like a flat nose... It will like a look... a flat nose 930 with flip-up headlights. Well, the, the thing we have got now is light technology lights are tiny now yeah, compared yeah, to what they used yeah, to be. Yeah, yeah. So you can package things up really quite tight now and it, it, it will still give that flat nose impression. Now, what Dean tried to convince me to do with the P1 is look at an option. You do a four litre engine. We do. You do a four litre yeah. V8 engine. How much power does that increase the P1 by? Well, it's, it's just a shade over 900 standard. It mm -hmm. goes to 1,000 horsepower. The biggest increase is in torque. It goes yep. to 1,050 new metres of torque. Um, that also helps the hybrid system because it's less reliant on the hybrid system. So you have a wider uh, range mm -hmm. on, on hybrid. Uh, so it's built by Cosworth, yep. so we don't actually do it in-house, Cosworth, we work with Cosworth on it. We do the fitment here and everything, yep. but it's different crank, titanium con rods, titanium valves, so it's a lot lighter as well. And what I think is special about it, the aesthetics, how it looks, it looks so much different. An HDK, yeah, for An sure. An HDK looks so much different. Yeah, you, you, you've got a full GTR aero package, and it, again, it's that usage, it's, it looks like a GTR, but it's still got luggage space, mm. it's still got the comfort, heating, air conditioning. I love conditioning. the louvers on the front, Yeah. The, the, how the spoiler sort of, it goes it goes like up and out. Yeah. Like, you've got a couple over here. Yes. Yeah, so Can got we get them on camera? Yep, we've got a couple okay. in, in build we've at the moment. Careful we get on camera. So we have two two so tubs in, in build at the moment. These are in build and, and this one is kind so of... That's just a GTR. Oh, that's just a GTR, that's not HDK. No. So you, are, you, are you making that road legal? This is already road legal. So this is in for service. Okay. Um, it has a bag tank, so every five years the bag tank needs to be replaced on it. So that's being done at the moment. So this is this is in build. So this is a this is a client's car, which yeah. started off like like my P1. Exactly. So it, it's very similar. The the bodywork on a standard road car, the nose incorporates the luggage bin as on a, a GTR and an HDK. They're separate. So this is a separate piece. Every panel is replaced. We modify the doors, but every other panel is is replaced. And you can see where the louvers, this is the exit system for the, yeah. the louvers. And a road car doesn't doesn't have that at all. Doesn't. No. Also the other difference is a billet upright, solid joint suspension, and a, a single hub, single wheel nut yeah. instead of the five yeah. uh, wheel nuts on it. So all the suspension. Is there a wheel option for a HDK or is it one set of wheels? There's two that, options. There's two options. Yeah, so you can have a seven spoke uh, OZ standard wheel or you can have a Dimag five spoke. Uh, it's carbon. Okay. It's carbon okay. barrel. Oh right. Okay. With a with a forged aluminium. What seems to be the more popular option for customers? Or probably most, both. M well, no, most are going five spoke, yeah. which is really so retro, so old. Well, it's looking. like the F1 GTR wheel, I'm assuming. It is. Yeah. And, and that's what people are sort of gravitate into. A lot of people also are specking the colours, not like race liveries. Mm -hmm. They're going much more classic in the, the colours we've done. Well, like, the colour you had last year. The dark green. The dark green yeah, carbon. With brown interior, oh. which people wouldn't associate those colours with a car that's elaborate yeah. and as wild looking as this. But it, it seems to work quite well. I think it also, from a, from a customer's point of view, if they're going for their, it's not even their own spec of a car, it's their own rebuild of a car. Yeah. What a waste to have a, a standardish like silver, you know? You, you've yeah. got to, if you're going that far, you may as well have a special paint and a special finish with exposed carbon here and there and somewhere else. And, and I imagine there's no limit for you. It is exactly that. They can have the switch gear, the pedals, they can have anything. I mean, this one's got full gloss carbon interior. This is a satin carbon interior. So even down to carbon finishes, uh, this one's got the gold wishbones to look like an F1 because an F1 GTR had the gold wishbones on it. Um, and tell me, because you never did really, because we, uh, we never got that far. What is the, if I said to you, Dean, do that car for me, HDK, full conversion, not including the donor car, because you can come and buy the donor car from me, <laughs> but not including the donor car, are you allowed to say how much it would cost somebody? Yeah, conversion uh, for this year, for, for, for 2024, it's 750,000 mm -hmm. for the HDK, it's 150,000 for the engine. So the HDK doesn't include the four litre engine? No. That's so an you're 900,000 in, yeah. you have to buy a car somewhere between one and a quarter and one and a half million, mm -hmm. and then you're 900,000 on. And has there ever been one of these cars sold on the market? Yeah, the, the, they, the, 
That there has been one that's sold in the US and it, yeah. it sold for three and a half million dollars. So it makes sense. Yeah, it's not too bad. It makes sense. Yeah, and they we're know. only doing nine. Yeah, yeah. So okay, so when they're all done. Yeah, so we all, all nine are, are sold. Uh, so then if you want one after that, you'll have to buy a used one and then we'll recommission it. Like yeah. repaint and re But then the, there's, there's going to go through yeah. the roof. Just like, like a Pagani in the way of all the Zondas are finished, you can customise it, exactly. make it into like what, a 760, whatever you want, yeah. and then, yeah. But on our spec, on our pricing, the spec is unlimited. So oh, we yeah. don't we don't charge extra for a different colour, a different, it's, it's, that is the ceiling oh, so, price. So, the, so if whatever colour I wanted, yeah. it wouldn't exceed that? No. Oh, you see, I'd charge you extra. <laughs> well, or you would hurt me and yeah. like choose the most elaborate paint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> to get your you money should go with this gold fleck. <laughs> Before we leave the workshop, there's one more car I want you to talk to me about. Is that uh, that tag? Ah, the tag turbo. Yeah. Yeah. So we have one there. Let's go and have that's a look at the, it. I think that's Can we get this car on film? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's the seventh car. Uh, Seven built. out of ten, you make it. Eleven of this version. Okay. Um, this is quite cool. This has got the engine that Keke Rosberg finished second in the Monaco Grand Prix in 86. So tell me how you get that engine. I got them from McLaren. So you, so. you, you go to McLaren, you yep. ask them for their old Formula One engines that, that was in the car in 1976, 75, whenever it was. It was in the 80s. In the 80s. Yeah, so I, I actually offered, I, I tried to buy, they have, a, a, they have the original car. There is a one-off original of this. Okay. Uh, the McLaren still owned that I have loved for years mm -hmm. and, and tried to, to buy that some time ago and ended up negotiating to buy a batch of engines and to recreate a run, a very small run, uh, based off of that. But every engine has a race history. It's certified by McLaren what that race history is. Um, so they've all, you're buying a car that has so an what, engine what in it. So what was McLaren's tie-in with Porsche then? The, so at the time, Mansur Ojo was a shareholder of McLaren. Yeah. Uh, he was obviously TAG. Mm -hmm. And TAG financed Porsche to build an engine. So even though it didn't have Porsche badging, it is a Porsche engine. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and they put one in, one of uh, a 930 back in the day. How does as a it development. fit in the 930? I don't know how it fits. Well, it's, it's, you, it's probably worth having, a, having cool. a look. Because it's actually a very small engine. It's a tiny engine bay. It's, it's a small engine, it's the auxiliaries that kind of fill everything up so into I mean I can't see anything here yeah <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's tucked right down in the, yeah. in the corner but the engine weighs a hundred kilos less than a standard Porsche turbo really engine. yeah so the car's a lot lighter it weighs just over literally just over a thousand kilos and the car's made of carbon fiber this is a steel shell still but all of this is carbon the rear wing you can see it's all carbon yeah. underneath um, doors are aluminium Bonnet carbon, all the front bumpers carbon. Oh, and that's painted. Yeah, that's all the painted. The tag is in. painted into that. You need to get this on camera. It's unbelievable. Um, Exhaust system, all titanium. The headers are in canal. How many brake horsepower has this got? It's just over 500. And what does it weigh? 1,020 kilos. 1,020 kilos. Yeah. It, is, it is super quick. So you've had to buy the shell or, or, or the donor car of a 930. Yeah. You've had to buy a gearbox from a 993. Yeah. And you've had to buy Kiki Rosberg's engine yeah, from yeah. his McLaren yeah. race car. So what's the, how much is this going to cost me? These... Um, this one's got to be more because of the, the engine that the car come out of surely. All of the... Well, they're all set at the same price. So they were just over 1.1 million pounds each for standard... Including one. tax? Uh, no, that plus, was tax. plus tax. Okay. Uh, but it did include the donor. Yep. Um, and they all had good engines. Uh, we had some race winning engines. Yeah. Um, and you wouldn't charge more for them? No, we kind, we kind of... It is what it is. It was you get first what you come, get. first serve. Exactly. So we had our list and then the first people who came, we said, this is our list of engine histories and chassis numbers. Which one do you want to go with? And, and people sort of went from there. And these are all sold? Yeah. But you're making another variant? There's a lightweight variant uh, that's in build now. So we're doing 11 what looks stock. Yep. And then we're doing three lightweight ones and they're in more race liveries to celebrate are the they, three world Are they still based off of a 930? Yeah. But I take it it has some kind of a GT2 spoiler or something look-alike. It's, um, 
a little bit more front end aero actually, yep. more carbon, mm. all the doors are carbon, all the roof's carbon, uh, the inside's very exposed. So you think of sort of Turbo S versus GT3 RS. If you, if you think yeah, of yeah, a of modern course. car and the difference is yep. this would be a Turbo S mm -hmm. and the other car would be like a, an RS. It'd be yep. roll cage in it, um, 900 kilos of lighter again. I love the interior of it. The guy spec this himself. Yep. So you could, again with this, same thing as the HDK. You have a you have a ceiling of how much it's going to cost, and they can yep. choose whatever color combination. Well, this want. there were some parameters, and the parameters were fixed on this that it had to be a, a, a Porsche color. Mm -hmm. So it couldn't be like a chrome or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it kind of needed to look original, and the materials had to be original materials from the day. So no one's even got, better. So no one's got Alcantara or anything yeah. it, it, because that wasn't around. Uh, in that period and available to this model. But it is amazing when you look into it, how many trim options and color options were available then. It was- How many original tags were made? Only one. Only one, mm. that was it? That McLaren have. McLaren own it? Yeah. Well. Wow. Yeah. But so you've had full access to, to dimensions and, yep. and everything. No, they were, suit, they were very accommodating with that. Uh, we had it for a very limited period of time. We have actually serviced it for them as well. Um, well, look, surely no one else could make a recreation of that. Only you could do it. You, you need to really assess the original one. Yeah. Uh, it's got quite a unique bell housing and, and a few items like engine positioning and stuff like that so that we went through. Um, but this is a lot more usable than their one. Yeah, their one is a prototype, yeah, so yeah, yeah. you look under the bonnet and it's like full of plumbing and you know, <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, which you'd expect. You should supply them with a watch. They do get a watch. Do they? Oh, mm. there you go, just thought of everything. This guy's uh, of everything. The, so it's, um, it's a tag Monaco spec'd by uh, Bamford. Yeah. And the face is in the colour of the car, and the strap is in the materials of the trim. Oh, good! And it has the chassis number on it. Oh, that's so good. So they do get, do yeah, get a good, watch. Yeah, good, good, good. Well, at least they get. And it's a, not extra either. At least they get a watch with a brand. You see, the Porsche deliver cars now watches to customers, and the brand of the watch is Porsche. Who's going to yep. wear that? Well, you know? yeah. But no, that's an incredible thing. Incredible. Thank you very much for showing me around. Not a problem. I appreciate it. Thank Thanks you. I look forward to having this back soon. Yeah, very soon. Yeah, have it next week. Good.